team to victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. A throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run. This is Jonathan Taylor. And he'll lose yardage here. Going down back at the 28. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside and finished off the runner for a loss. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Richardson looking to throw this. That complete to Downs. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. It's a gain of nine, but it's also going to mean a punt here on their opening drive. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. Desmond King deep for Houston. Yeah, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So here come the Texans now for their first drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. Tell you what, partner, he might just be a rookie, but he certainly looks the part of a veteran NFL starter, and he carries himself like one leading the offense out there. In a lot of ways, he's advanced as a first-year quarterback, and he came in and was right at home with this offense. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground, and he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys, let's keep it going. Second down and three. Now Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Stroud looking to throw. That's caught again by Schultz. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. And they're going to go with the jet sweep. This is Diggs with it. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, I sure wouldn't be surprised if we see more of this as this game goes on because we know they like to use their wideouts either on quick throws or on jet sweeps like what we just saw there. And to say that that one worked well, partner, that's stating the obvious. Mixon with a first down carry. 
Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Catch is made. It's Schultz on the out route. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. It'll be a gain of five. And now we've got a third and four. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Grover Stewart getting in there for the sack. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the left hash, this from 39. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And it's now 3-0 Texans. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. And I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here too after a good stop. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is in running back drop down. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. On second down, it's Taylor. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now a third and six. Now it's Richardson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now a second and six. There, Richardson back to throw it. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. That's Foley Fadukasi who got in there and finished off the play. 
And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Richardson looking to throw. And that is incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. So the hold on special teams backs him up all the way inside the 15 to start. A little jet sweep to start the drive. Oh, and this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now second and five. An option handoff here to Mixon. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Stroud to the air on first and ten. Flushed out right. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him ten that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first-round pick this year, and part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Digs in motion left. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. What an advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Play action. Stroud now. That one complete. It's Tank Dell. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 36. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 36. Stroud out of the gun here. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Woods. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. Let's go now. Let's 
50. Panther 50. You, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Stroud. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. But don't tell any defensive coordinator I've played for, but that might be considered a win for both teams because defensively they stopped them short and forced the fourth down. But offensively, they picked up enough yards to give their kicker a better shot if that's what they want to do. They'll pass up a field goal attempt. It would have been a 45-yarder. Now they'll go for it on fourth. They run for it with Mixon. And I don't think he got there. He did not. They stop him a yard shy. Denied on fourth down is Joe Mixon. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. 60 bison, 60 bison. Richards into the air on first down. Being chased out left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Richardson to throw. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Richardson. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. 
And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 33. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Richardson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. For Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think but, you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. The toss here completed to Pittman. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. Back to throw, Richardson. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Looking to throw, Richardson. He's got Granson over the middle. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And third and eight now. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Back to throw. Richardson. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, it's been a tough go for them. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. From the left hash, a 31-yard attempt. Gay's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 three, three now as the kick is away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. OK. 
Second and ten. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Third and eight. Here's Stroud. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Colts will go on offense here first and 10. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Let's go now. Two yards to go, second down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And Taylor going to pick up the Colts first down as he'll get this up past the 40. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, Go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Ready, break. On first down, Goodson. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Here's a second and five. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Operating from the gun, Richardson. They'll find his man. That's Tanner again. So the completion gets him just a yard, and it'll be fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Texans' offense set to regain possession. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. 
I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Stroud working out of the gun. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. Another one caught by Collins. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. First and 10, it's Stroud. He's got it to Collins complete. And they are into field goal range now as he's got the first down at the 26. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Again, it's Drowd. Dumps it off to Mixon. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and that'll make it second down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's six to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room so to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon Godden. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game, and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Now here's Stroud on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. The Texans send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's taken to the 26. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. Yeah, they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day they'll try and run for the first with taylor and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49 45 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. They run once more with Taylor. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second and eight. Operating from the gun, Richardson. He'll get this one to Pittman. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Cowboy 
Now a give to Taylor. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Looking to throw. Richardson. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Brandon, you know I'm all about quarterbacks protecting themselves, but I have to admit it. I liked what I just saw there. That rookie wasn't afraid of absorbing a big hit. Now, you don't want to see him taking those shots all game long, but he picked up the first down, kept fighting for yards, and was willing to embrace some contact to keep the play moving. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. Operating from the gun, Richardson. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. A gain of seven that time, second goal. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Taylor is going to take this one in for a Colts touchdown. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And he's got it as the lead is now 10-6. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. And he'll very wisely take a knee here as they'll bring this one out to the 25 on the touchback. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? Is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Now they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what well, you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. 
Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And Stroud now to throw. That is incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. The Texans send the punter out as he's on here to punt it away. And the punt will kick out of bounds and it'll be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 66 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. down Richardson and this nearly an interception but it's incomplete well a turnover really would have helped him there but not to be that certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down second and short I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and ten. Throwing again. Richardson eluding the pressure right. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Able to find a lot of empty space there. Picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 38. On the handoff, Taylor. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second and five. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Ready? 
So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Back to throw, Richardson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. No surprise to see a sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. And they'll go to the air now with Richardson. Flush to his right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Straight ahead, it's Sermon. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Come on now. We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. First and ten, here's Richardson with it. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. So the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside, make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. On second down, it's Sermon. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. The offense on third down, five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and three. Operating from the gun, Richardson. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Danico Autry drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage. At that time, they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. This one no doubt important for Matt Gay. This will get the lead up to seven. And Gay knocks this one through. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13-6. From a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the made field goal, Gay back out there to kick it off. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And now out comes Houston. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Ready, ready. 
And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Mixing up the middle. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about its desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Here's third and seven. Stroud to throw it. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. The Texans send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And they'll run with Sermon to begin the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Back to Sermon on first down. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Again, it's Sermon. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. Ready, ready. Third and three. Four down, four down. Check. Four. Three. Richardson out of the shotgun. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Ready? 
Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Richardson looking to throw this. Oh, and that is incomplete. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Here's second and ten. To throw again, Richardson. A short throw, this is caught by Cox. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And incomplete here to bring up fourth down as the rookie couldn't haul it in. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Houston set to take over. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well. I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Now Stroud. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate, maybe, to get that back. It's third down. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Stroud looking to throw. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Mixon with a first down carry. Tackle made by Grover Stewart. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 33. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Looking to throw. Stroud. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. DeForest Buckner with a sack, the former number seven overall pick. 
And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. They'll come up now on second down. Here's Stroud. Throw over the middle is taken in by Dell. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Now Stroud. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Under 90 seconds to go. Here's second and 10. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And here he'll get it down to the seven. First things first here, they got to pick up the first down. And remember, it is fourth down, so they've got to pick up a completion here. Otherwise, this one's over. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was... And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good, long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as the kick's away here. And with time of factor here late, he'll just take a knee, and they'll start things out at the 25. The Colts set to take over here offensively. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? 
and he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Here we go. Just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. Richardson. Buying time to his left. And yeah, this is not going to be what they needed. They get a few here, but now third down as the clock runs. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. An important one here, no doubt. Third and four. Now Richardson. That's complete to Pierce. And they will get the conversion on third down, but the clock, a more pressing factor. Well, this offense still has the one timeout here, remember. First and ten. Richardson to throw it. And he's got Pierce. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Here's Richardson. He's going to let it go deep for Mitchell. And that's going to be incomplete. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. So the Texans will have the first opportunity here in the overtime session as we are back underway. Taking it about the one. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And here comes the Texans now. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And here in overtime, that had the potential to be the definition of a game-changing interception. But he couldn't find a way to pull it in. And that's a disappointment there. Now a second and 10. Stroud. He's got his man. It's the tight end, Brevin Jordan. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. 
I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. Stroud will look to throw once more. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten more there and another first down. This is a big spot for a rookie QB in overtime. It's kind of where you earn your stripes, isn't it? It really is. And we've talked with enough coaches and players about how these youngsters are getting into the game and playing this at such a high level so early. But overtime, that's an entirely different animal, and he's handling it well. Yeah, starting to put together a nice drive. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. The defensive line made pretty easy work of the offensive line that time. And people get tired of the cliche that the battle is won in the trenches. But it's a cliche because it's true. And how about the battle right there? One on the edge, and the ball carrier did not benefit. Well, they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. DeForest Buckner picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, they were trying to set up a screen there, but that one just too slow and developing. Yeah, too slow and developing and well read because that ends up being a bad feeling for the quarterback when he's got no blocking in front of him. His guys are just going to let defenders go, and they're coming for him. So if it's not there, you just got to throw the ball at the turf at your running back's feet. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Back to throw. Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 32-yard line. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Stroud out of the gun here. Keeps himself upright. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty ensues. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 13-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first, shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here in overtime. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it, all right? I've got the, I've got the sweaty palms here with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Seven yards left for second down. Ball at the 10. Looking to throw. Stroud. It's Pierce with the catch along the sideline. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up third and two. Come on, 
They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Here goes Stroud again. And this is going to be incomplete. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? All right, here we go. The field goal unit staying on the sideline here at OT. They're going for it on fourth. They'll try and run for it. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. It's a gain of four that time, and the Texans are going to have a first and goal. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Pierce. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Third and goal, Stroud. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes... You throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it was the tight end Dalton Schultz on the touchdown reception to cap the drive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Richardson dials up the first throw of overtime. That one finds Pierce right side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, Richardson. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That one goes for 24 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Richardson 
And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Here we go, here we go. Second and 10. 19, Tiger, 19, Tiger. Tiger, Tiger. Here, Richardson yet again. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. I got you. I got you. 43 is the mic, boy. 43. Check, check. 43. First and 10, it's Richardson. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. They're going to empty the backfield here, so you know this ball's likely to come out quick. They let the four outside receivers run deeper routes and then let the tight end just make a beeline across the formation. He's able to make the catch and turn it into good yardage and a first down. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now Richardson. Throw going to be caught left side here by Granson. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Back to the air with Richardson. Time. They're going for it on fourth down. Richardson working from the gun. Touchdown, Colts! Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free and his guy made a nice catch just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game gay is on for the point after and it's up and good so a nice drive put together there they go 75 yards in nine plays and the result for the colts Here's a touchdown. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level.
They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Stroud to throw it. Finding Schultz. And he'll have a first down, but a great tackle there keeps him from getting to the boundary. Now a timeout called for by the offense. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. Stroud. Over the middle complete. That's Collins. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. One overtime. How about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. Here's second and three. Hand off right side to Pierce. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. They'll come up facing third and five. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 33. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a give, Akers running left. And an excellent job of finding the opening as he's got this now all the way down to the 22. 11 more on that one and another first down. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. First and ten, it's Pierce. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And another timeout taken by the Colts. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So on is their kicker, and it's down to this. This from 36 yards out. And he got it. The kick is good. And they have won it here in double overtime.
And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Indy.